Off we do. Maybe some, some people in this room know something that I don't. Uh, okay, so section four. So this is uh, trace formulas modulo P. So now we're actually going to get onto some formulas which are going to be useful for point counting. Okay. Now, in section three, uh, what, I just, what I just finished, I was working over FQ, but from now on, I'm working over FP. Okay, so now, uh, Q is equal to P. Okay, just to keep our lives simple. And P, P is odd. P is an odd prime. Okay. Um, and, and I should really point out that everything I'm going to do can be done over FQ. Okay, there's no essential obstruction. We know how to do that. For instance, you look at um, my paper from 2015, that's everything is over FQ, so you can see how it works there. Okay, so the situation is we have a hyperliptic curve, uh, C over FP, Y squared is F of X, okay, and the genus at least one. Um, so whenever I write this, you should just assume that f is square free of degree 2g plus 1 or 2g plus 2. That's the standard setup for the rest of the course. Okay. So I'm going to first of all state a baby version of the trace formula. So baby trace formula. And I think this is proposition 4.1.1 in the notes. Okay, so let H be F to the P minus 1 over 2. So F is our defining polynomial. And I take F to the P minus 1 over 2. So this is also a polynomial in fpx, I should have said here, f is fpx. Okay, but it's, it's a bit bigger, it's got higher degree. Um, then, um, the number of points over fp, so not a power of p yet, just fp, number of points over FP is congruent, it's not equal, it's congruent to 1 minus the sum, J is 1 to G, of certain coefficients of H, H, J, P minus 1. And this is all modulo P. Now, I should, I should probably say what this notation means, h with a subscript. Whenever I write a subscript, I mean, I mean a coefficient, right? So h, h, i means um, coefficient of x to the i. Okay, so what this formula is saying is that um, I can figure out the number of points on the curve modulo p um, by looking at this sum. 1 minus sum of a bunch of coefficients of h. Let's take a quick look at an example. So a quick example. Let's take p is um, 11 and g equals 2. So a genus 2 curve over f11. So the degree of f um, well, it could be um, it could be either five or six. Let's just assume it's six. And then um, h is going to be f to the power of p minus one over two, which is five. So the degree of h is going to be thirty. Um, 
And the coefficients we're interested in here, so I get number of points on the curve over F11, is going to be 1 minus um, H10 minus H20. This is modulo 11. Okay, so if I write out all the coefficients of H, right, this is going to be constant term, right, this is X, X squared, etc. X to the 10, X to the 20, X to the 30. And these are the only two coefficients I need. Okay, so the degree is quite large, it's 30, but I can throw away most of the coefficients. I don't care about them, I only care about those two coefficients. There's two of them because it's genus 2, and the spacing between them is coming from P. Okay, now it's kind of annoying that we only get the answer modulo 11, right? Now, it might be okay because remember the Hasse Weibel bound constrains the possible value. And it turns out if P is big enough um, relative to the genus, then in fact this tells you the exact number of points. And there's an exercise about that in the notes, um, and also an example where it doesn't tell you enough. Okay, if P is too small, this is not quite enough. Um, now, in section 8 of the notes, which I suspect we will not get to this week, um, there is a, a more general formula like this, which, um, which will count the number of points modulo a power of P. Okay? So it's a, it's a more complicated formula with more terms, but you can get the result modulo a power of P, um, and that will, that's another way of solving that problem. Okay? But I probably won't get to that, unfortunately. Okay, I've got like two minutes left. So in these two minutes, I'm going to sketch the basic idea of the proof of this. And the, the details are left to you in a problem. So idea of proof. The idea of the proof is if alpha is in FP, let's say FP star, so non-zero element of FP, then you can look at f of alpha to the p minus 1 over 2. Now this expression um, is going to be either 0 or 1 or minus 1 modulo p depending on whether f of alpha is a square or not. So what you do is you, you take a sum of alpha over fp star of um, f alpha to the p minus 1 over 2 plus 1, and you sort of evaluate this in two different ways, right? One way gives you the number of points that you're trying to count, and the other way, if you expand out this expression using h of x, then you'll get some sums that look like uh, sum of alpha to the, you know, j times k where where, um, sorry, you sum of alpha to the j, where alpha runs over fp star, you get a, bu a bunch of terms like this, and uh, most of these are going to be zero. And the ones that are going to be zero are the ones coming from these, these coefficients here, and the only ones you're left with are, are these, these ones. And there's a slight complication that you have to worry about, the, the, you have to worry about there's some special cases for alpha equals zero and alpha is infinity, and you have to deal with those, but then it all comes out in the wash. Okay, so I'll leave, I'll leave the details of that to you. Um, so next time, uh, which is tomorrow, we will look at the adult version, maybe grown-up version is a better, better phrase, um, which is going to give us a similar congruence for the number of points over an extension of FP. Okay? All right, cool. Thank you. Okay, are there questions?